I made a new plugin for ZBrush and after you install it, it's going to appear here in Z plugin arm and mirror. And let's go over some of the options. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with ZBrush and some of the later stages of your project, it can be quite annoying to do something as simple as mirroring this subtool to the other side. If I try to do that right now, ZBrush is going to complain. So we have to first go to our layers, bake all of our layers. And if you're wondering why the poly paint color changes, I believe that's because I mix poly paint with sculpting layers. <laughs> so pay no attention to that. And after we bake those layers, we need to go to geometry, delete all of our subdivision levels. And now we're finally able to go under modified topology and mirror and weld. And of course, if we want our sub D levels back, we now need to spam this reconstruct button a few times until the operation fails. And we move the slider all the way back to the top. So that's the process. Doing that one time is doable, but imagine having to do that more than once. So let's go back in time so I can show you how this plugin works. So we'll go all the way there. And this time I'm going to use my custom menu, which is different from the modified topology Marin Weld. So watch this. I click it once. It does that entire process for me, minus the filling of the color. <laughs> but as you can see, we still have our subdivision levels. So it automates the entire process and it's way faster than clicking on all these different buttons. So let's uh, Marin Weld this one as well. Click this button super fast and it also groups all of those operations in a single undo step so even though you can see them here individually all i have to do if i change my mind is press ctrl z once and you can see it goes all the way back to the beginning but wait there's more you might have noticed we have different modes here so this time i'm going to use folder mode and we're going to enable the arm now one thing i would recommend before you do any folder operation is double check that you're in the correct folder so what you want to do is not click on the folder that does nothing other than expand and collapse it what you want to do is select something that's inside the folder either by selecting it here in the viewport or expanding it and then clicking on something in there so now you can see we have this little pencil icon and we're in the correct folder so what i'm going to do now is instead of mirror and weld i want to show you how instancing works so I did speed that up for the sake of YouTube, but creating instances is actually a lot faster than Marin welding because we're not duplicating any geometry, we're not rebuilding any sub D levels or anything like that. All we're doing is looking at this mesh and making it appear somewhere else on the screen. So the instances aren't real, which means we can actually disable them at any point in time. So I can just hide this instance and I can recreate it whenever I want. Now, this also means that it's really hard to break that symmetry. So if I turn it off, so no symmetry, I can still pose it symmetrically. But one of the best parts about instances is that we can turn on local symmetry and we can sculpt on this side, for example. And do we have symmetry turned on? No, we do not, there we go. So local symmetry is on and let's turn off dynamic. We can now have local symmetry and global symmetry at the same time, so two levels. And this is great if you're working on robotic characters because you can usually get away with your arms and your legs being fairly symmetrical. So you can work perfectly fine locally and still see what the other side looks like, which is amazing in my opinion. So let's make something that looks a little bit nicer. I don't know, we can do this. We can just grab the move brush, make this a lot wider. And you can see it appears both locally and globally. And if you're in one of the Maxon versions of ZBrush, of course, we can do this while we're posed and just make sure you have dynamic turned on, which means your symmetry is gonna be based off of where your gizmo is. So if I place it right here, my symmetry is gonna be right here and maybe use a different brush. And if I just reorient my gizmo like this, all of a sudden that's my new symmetry point, right? So to be perfectly honest, I don't usually use dynamic because uh, it doesn't work with every single tool. So if something's wrong about it or if you don't place your symmetry point correctly at the center, things might not uh, look the way you expect them to be. But that's not my fault, that's Maxon's fault. Now finally, let's just undo all of this and let's go to folder mode and simply hide all of our instances. So it's completely non-destructive. Now just keep in mind that these instances are using ZBrush's array system. So if you already had an array set up for something else, just make sure to create a new stage for that array before you click on the instancing button. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then good, that means you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> But wait, there's more. So let's say I wanted a mirror duplicate of this arm. And why a mirror? Because not everything is completely symmetrical. So the point is, it's not enough to just duplicate this arm and move it to the left. I do need a mirror, but is there a way I can keep both arms independent? So that way I can pose this one a certain way 
and the other arm a different way. And of course there is, I have this option right here. It's called duplicate and flip. Now I'm gonna set it to folder mode again, double check that we're in the correct folder and also double check local symmetry. If you want it to flip locally, then turn it on and it's gonna create a new arm that's on top of this one. So I want this to be duplicated globally. So I'm gonna disable local symmetry. And now we're gonna click on this. I know that despite my warning, you're still gonna make a mistake. Maybe you'll duplicate locally when you wanted a global duplicate or you'll duplicate the wrong folder. There's no need to panic in any of those situations. All you have to do is just spam the escape key to stop the current process. And in the case of duplicating and folder mode, all we have to do is simply delete the folder. So you do that by clicking on this gear, delete all, and I'm not gonna do that, <laughs> but uh, that will get rid of the folder that was duplicated. So there's no harm done if you make a mistake, at least when it comes to duplicating entire folders. But the point of that is that we can now pose these arms independently of each other. So let's click here. Let's just move this gizmo over there. We can pose this arm like this. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And let's use another transpose set here for this arm. Where am I seeing this pose? Is this Elden Ring? <laughs> I think the arms are a little bit short, but that's not the plugin's fault. Here's another example. Let's say I want to mirror to this from one side to the other. And if I use mirror and weld, it does this. So ZBrush usually mirrors from left to right. There are a few exceptions, but in this case, what we can do is we can use flip first to send it to the other side and then mirror and weld. But what if we don't want to weld together? You can see the center point here. This is a new singular mesh that's been merged together like a Boolean union. This is the equivalent of having the bisect option turned on in Blender. So what if we don't want that? What we can do instead is use this mirror. So this is mirror and weld and this is mirror without weld. So if I click on this, you can see we still get a mirror in the exact same subtool, but these pieces are not welded together. So they're still independent from each other. And of course I have symmetry turned on, which makes that a little bit weird. But as you can see, they're still separate objects in the same subtool, which means if we want, we can turn on symmetry at any point in time and still do that. Alternatively, you still have the option of just using duplicate and flip. Of course, that will give you a separate subtool. Just keep in mind that they won't be symmetrical. If I try to do something on this side, nothing will happen on the other side because they're separate subtools. So use whichever option you think is best. Some final settings for the plugin are reset mode and reconstruct. So reset is going to go back to subtool mode after every operation. So if you set it to folder and you press on duplicate and flip, it's gonna go back to subtool at the end of the operation for safety. Now, if you're an adult and no one tells you what to do, you can disable reset mode and it's gonna stay permanently in folder mode or whatever mode you pick. Also, if you feel like the process is a little bit slow, you can disable reconstructing your subdivisions. So that's gonna make things faster, but you're not gonna get your sub B levels back. Now, this doesn't uh, affect everything. For example, instances don't care about sub D levels. So you're not gonna speed it up by just disabling that. But everything else, I think, is affected by reconstruction, which is the slowest part of the operation. I was about to release this plugin, but I decided to try and add one more feature and I'm really glad I did. So here's how it works. Let's say I have this subtool and I'll just click on mirror and weld and let's count how long it takes. So that took a bit and don't get me wrong, the plugin is still way faster than you and I could ever be, but this subtool has seven sub D levels. So let me demonstrate what the problem is a little bit. Let's do this manually. And if I click the reconstruct button, it happens near instantly, right? The first time. But the more I click on this button, it starts to slow down a little bit more and a little bit more. And then this last level is the one that just takes absolutely forever. And if we think about it, do I ever need to go this low again? As a creator of this project, I can tell you, no, I do not need this sub D level. So what I can do is go to the plugin here and also let's go back in time just so we're scientific. Let's set the reconstruct limit to something smaller. So I'm gonna set it to three, why not? Let's set it to three and I'm gonna click mirror and weld and again count the time it takes for the process. That was way faster. I didn't even have to speed that up. Of course, we only get three sub D levels, but it's not like it's a destructive process. If I really want more, I can just go back down and reconstruct more of them. 
So to summarize, that slider right there is a great way of getting even more performance out of the plugin without any drawbacks. And that was just one subtool. Imagine once we start operating on entire folders. Now, one thing to note about that slider, and let me use a different example. Let's take this sphere. This sphere currently has three subdivision levels, but it could have more. As you can see, we can keep going all the way down. So one thing that slider will not do is give you more levels than you previously had. Otherwise, you might end up in situations like this, where you mirror and weld the sphere, and all of a sudden it has way more levels than before. So this slider can only give you the same or less, never more. So that's by design. And that is all. So if you found this plugin to be interesting, I'll add some links below.